Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com and saving a complete in-depth review of the new Wahoo Roller Smart Roller Trainer thingamajig. Uh, technically, it's both a roller and a smart trainer. Wahoo in their own press release calls it a smart trainer, so that's what it is. The idea though being that you can very quickly take your bike and just plop it on this. So just demonstrate how quick this is and to take it off, I'm gonna take this out. The bike is now free of this. And then to install it, I just simply slide it in like this. And even though I just missed just then, uh, I am now done. We're talking like sub three seconds to go ahead and stick it on the trainer and your radar roll. There's no locking the rear wheel or anything like that. You just ride with it. Now, before we get into all the degree details, let's quickly talk price. Uh, the kicker roller is $799. That does include this whole front stand thing as well. It's all one big box, as you'll see in just a second. That puts it about 100 bucks cheaper than the kicker core at $899 and a few hundred bucks more than the kicker snap at $499. I know there's a pros and cons to both of those, and that's probably a different video for a different day. Now, of course, as I mentioned earlier on, it's both a smart trainer as well as a smart roller, meaning that can connect to apps like Zwift or Train Road or Wahoo System using AMP Plus as well as Bluetooth Smart, in fact, multi-channel Bluetooth Smart. It can simulate grades up to 10% uh, and has a max wattage of 1500 watts. But the catch though here is that it requires a power meter on your bike. So unlike the Wahoo Kicker or the Wahoo Snap or every other Wahoo trainer ever, uh, those transmit their own power. But in the case of the Wahoo Roller, uh, that requires you pair to a power meter of any brand on your bike itself. And the way that works is the first time you start pedaling, it'll find the nearest power meter to it and just simply pair to it. Now, of course, you can override that later on the app and I'll show you that, uh, but in terms of that, it does need that power meter there in order to work. It will not work without a power meter. Make this super duper clear. Uh, this will not work with Zwift or Train Road or any other app without a power meter on your bike. Now, assuming you have a power meter, the next question is whether or not your bike tires will fit on this. Uh, now, Wahoo says I recommend up to 2.1 inches or 53 millimeters for tire width. That's gonna cover pretty much all road bikes out there, uh, as well as most gravel bikes. It won't necessarily cover though all mountain bikes. In fact, my mountain bike over there is like a smidge too big. Okay, now before we walk through this from front to back or back to front, let's talk about the box. It comes in this beefy box that you see right there, uh, and then your job is to assemble it. The good news is despite how awkward the box is, to get like up to where you want to because it's pretty heavy. Uh, the fact is that it's actually easy to assemble. You're gonna take these parts out. You're gonna have the rear part there. You're gonna have the front part. And you've got two little screws already screwed in there. You gotta temporarily unscrew them, stick those two pieces together, re-screw them together, and you're done. It's honestly as easy as that. There's like not much to do here. It's really simple. Then you're gonna go ahead and stick your bike into it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I showed you earlier, removing it just means you take this little wheel, rotate it forward and frontwards or forward and backwards, and then you take it out. Uh, now, this entire thing can collapse down. So you can see it goes down like this flat. So you could slide this underneath the bed if you want to. You need about eight inches of clearance underneath your bed to slide this underneath there. You could also go ahead and put this like standing up in a closet or something like that, but it's not terribly easy to move otherwise. Like you can't like take it to a race with you. It just wouldn't be super practical. Once you've got it in there, you can adjust those two front wheel portions. So the right size for front wheel. And then you just simply use this front wheel to tighten this sort of prong, if you will, around your wheel so it's nice and sturdy. You can see there, there's a little bit of flex, but it's fine. Of course, the rear is not locked in. As I mentioned and showed earlier, it just hangs out. It's your body weight pressing down on this that goes ahead and keeps it on the rollers themselves. And in fact, it's because of that design right there is the reason why there's no power meter built into it. We've seen smart rollers over the years and all of them have been horribly inaccurate when it comes to guesstimating power. Uh, and the reason for that is because there's no known pressure on the rollers themselves. Unlike a smart trainer or a wheel on smart trainer where you clamp it on there and you kind of calibrate and all that, you can't do that here because every time you shift your body weight forward or backwards, it's gonna change the weight pretty dramatically on the rollers. So if you were to sprint, for example, you're shifting your weight forward on the handlebars, which takes off weight on the rear, which would screw up the power calculations. That unfortunately is what it is in terms of this particular design or really any smart roller design. So that's why you do need to pair up that power meter. As I mentioned earlier, it'll automatically do that and show you the pairing link on the side of the trainer itself. Little icon there that indicates you are paired to your power meter. Uh, you can also force it to a given power meter using the app itself. So in the Wahoo Fitness app, you can go ahead and search for your power meters, choose your particular AMP plus ID from the list, and it'll always save that particular power meter and relink back to it again. That's useful if you have other people around you, for example, or if you just want to ensure that it always connects to the same power meter every single time. 
And again, that's any amp plus power meter, so you're not limited to just to Wahoo ones. Once that's done, you can go ahead and pair it up like any other smart trainer. Uh, so the way it works is it takes the power from your power meter and routes it through itself, so through the roller, and then back out again to apps. So from those apps perspective, it's got power already in it. So you'll pair it up as a controllable smart trainer, uh, as a power source, as well as cadence. You can see this here in Zwift, uh, and then I'm off and riding. And I'll be honest, the feel is actually way better than I expected. I did not expect great road feel from this because in general, road feel uh, from smart rollers tends to be kind of iffy, uh, but this is actually really good road feel, at least for most things. Like steady state riding is really good. You get a little bit of that movement side to side because of the roller action there. Uh, so that's all pretty good. Uh, and then surges are pretty good. Where it has some issues though is sprints. So the actual sprint itself, no problems at all. Like it stays on the roller, I have no issues. But as soon as I put my butt back down on the saddle, then I start bouncing around like a really bad pilot bouncing down the runway a bunch. And that happens for like, seven to 10 seconds, like bounce, 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 bounce bounce until you're finally there. And it's just, it's a really awkward feeling. Uh, and that unfortunately isn't what I would expect from an $800 device. Uh, obviously the Kicker Core is $899 and it's far better than that. Even the Kicker Snap from a sprinting standpoint is better at $499. And in fact, the Kicker Snap actually contains the exact same flywheel as this. Uh, it's identical, the same weight, the same size. You can compare them side by side. It's the same part probably that's stuck on the side of the Snap is as on the roller. Now, setting aside the sprint quirkiness, I actually get really good road feel out of this. Not so much the acceleration deceleration due to the flywheel, which isn't as good as a kicker core or the kicker, uh, but actually just like that little bit of vibration you get from having a rear wheel on this. Uh, because of the fact that it's your weight on this rear wheel, as you shift your weight, you feel the shifts in vibrations versus a typical wheel on trainer is locked in there. So that's a very static feel the entire time. That's not like outdoors. So I actually really like the road feel of this, uh, despite that sprint quirks as I mentioned earlier on. Now, speaking of things that you should like, which is this video, uh, mainly because it really does help with this video quite a bit. Also, if you want this cool shirt, it's linked down below as well. It's like the only merch I have. So you can check that out down there as well. Now, the next question is what about erg mode? So we've talked about Zwift and sprinting and kind of steady state riding. What about erg mode? So something like train road or any sort of structured workout. Uh, now, unfortunately, that isn't super hot uh, and mainly the stability. Uh, so again, there's no power accuracy by itself. So I can't measure power accuracy. Uh, you see about a one second delay, maybe two seconds on the high end uh, between what this does and retransmits out to Zwift or after train road, but we'll set that aside. Instead, I'm talking about how well it goes from something like 150 watts up to 300 watts. So can it go ahead and make that jump and then hold that wattage stably the entire time? And unfortunately, the answer there is no. And in fact, it's actually no in a couple different ways. The first off is something called the resistance floor. That is what is the minimum speed that you have to go to get down to certain wattage levels. Uh, and you see here in this trainer world workout I did, at the very beginning, my wattage is way above what the wattage should have been for that particular portion of the workout. And it's not because I was overshooting it, it's because my gearing wasn't correct. So I had to go to the absolute easiest gear in my bike to get down to 125 watts, that initial warm up portion there, uh, which, you know, going to an easier gear is a normal trick in erg mode to gain more accuracy, but it shouldn't be what you need to get to the very bottom of the resistance floor, because it kind of ruins the road feel. So I was only going 10 miles an hour, 15 kilometers an hour there. So you're not feeling very fast, you're feeling you're kind of just chugging along. But the bigger issue you see just how variable that resistance is across the entire workout. Uh, now, there are some that argue this is more like outdoor rotting, and that's true, but that's not the point of erg mode. The point of erg mode is stability at a given wattage so that you're not expending extra energy doing this oscillation the entire time. Now, I asked Wahoo about this, and they said this is because they're not smoothing the power output on the trainer itself, which is kind of true, but kind of like really just sidestepping the issue. The simple reality of the issue is that they don't have a way to control that as well because they're not controlling the power coming into it. So they're sort of like constantly chasing things left and right, uh, which is something that a smart trainer that controls the power side of it as well as resistance side of it can deal with better. The next question is what about sound? And the answer to that is it's, it's loud. It's a wheel on trainer. Like any sort of wheel on trainer, any sort of wheel on roller system, they are not quiet. And this is no exception to that. In fact, here's a quick little audio sample that you can hear as I go from kind of steady state pedaling to ramping up into a full sprint. But before I do that, note that I'm going to go from my lav mic right here to the on-camera mic, which means you can hear all the echo in this crazy chamber of an echo box, which makes it sound a little bit louder than it is. But let's be clear, this is, this is the loudest trainer that Wahoo now makes. Okay, so this is a very simple sound test. Again, super echoing here. I'm just gonna ramp up to about 20 miles an hour, and then we go ahead and just go into a spring. Thank 
slow and get back on this. Okay, rounding home here is worthwhile noting that the Wahoo Roller is compatible with the Wahoo Direct Connect dongle. Uh, so this is Wahoo's Ethernet dongle. This allows you to plug this piece into a telephone jack looking port on the back of the roller, just like the Kicker V5 or 2020 about a year and a half or so ago, and then Ethernet cable on this side. And from there, you can skip any sort of electronic interference, especially useful if you're maybe, again, in an apartment scenario where you have a lot of Wi-Fi interference around you. This helps sidestep that. The one caveat though is that Zwift still doesn't support this. Over a year later in this particular adapter is still not supported by Zwift. So for the one thing you probably really want it for, it's not compatible. It is compatible with basically every other app on the market though, so that's positive. Okay, so with all that, where do we sit? And I, this is a tricky one. Uh, so things that I like first. Um, I love how quick and easy to take this out and put it back on again. Like the fact that I can do this and then go whoom and stick it in there and then be done in, what was that, 2.8 seconds? That is awesome. My wife, for example, she absolutely hates, despises putting her bike on trainers, either wheel on or direct drive, she despises that. This is simple, she would love this, that's great. The problem though, is that this setup requires a power meter. Uh, and so the idea of putting on a bike or taking on a bike quick and easy is something that appeals primarily to people that don't have power meters, that are probably newer to the sport, that are just getting into it. Uh, and so those people still have to go out and have spend 500 bucks or a thousand bucks or whatever it may be to add a power meter to the bike. So those two like market groups don't seem to fit in the middle very well here. The other challenge is that if you look at the high end, like for example, someone like myself that has a power meter on their bike, uh, that sprinting performance bit there, as much as I love the general ride feel of this for just like cruising around Zwift, the sprint side of it, as soon as I sprint to get back down again, it's just super, super awkward. And then if I look at erg mode, so for example, structured workouts, again, it's just all over the place there. So it's not something I would personally choose myself uh, for a structured workout, which then ultimately gets us back to the price and it's $799. I don't understand that price point. I just don't. I don't see why this particular design, which has roughly some of the same components as the Kicker Snap at $4.99, even on sale for less than that over the last couple of weeks, uh, is priced so drastically different, uh, especially given the requirements of having the power meter and some of the downsides of the sprint and structural workout performance. Uh, so I'm sure there is a market for this. I am just definitely not this market. My recommendation is spend hundred bucks more and get a Kicker Core and be happy with that choice. Plus aside from having a bigger flywheel with better road feel, the Kicker Core is totally silent. Uh, and again, doesn't require a separate power meter. Anyways, hopefully you found this video interesting or useful. If so, again, whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe. This is gonna be like a jam packed spring season. So you will not wanna miss any of the new videos coming up. Uh, it's got good times ahead in the sports technology realm. With that, have a good one.